Alternate air sources. Wow. This is a, a subject that uh, gets a lot of different discussions. There's a lot of different points of view, but some commonality there. I'm Bob Collins, and we're going to be talking about alternate air sources, better known as octos. Alternate air sources versus redundant air sources. You hear discussion about these a lot, and of course, um, depending on where you shop or who your instructor is, there's a certain line of commonality and sometimes there's not so much commonality. An alternate air source is basically just something different than your primary air source. And most, uh, most folks out there, and it's estimated that it's about 80 to 90 percent, let's call it 85 percent, of the people in the world in the different agencies are trained using what you see right here, yellow hose octos. And if you're new to the channel, reach down there and hit that subscribe button and look on the channel and you're going to see some other videos about regulators and things along these lines. But this video is strictly going to be about I'm just gonna call it octos. So octos come in a, a, a number of different variations. Most octos are like the one you see right here. It's a normal second stage that you see uh, shaped just like your primary second stage. And these come on mostly yellow hoses. But most manufacturers that, if you look around on the websites and stuff, most manufacturers you're going to see make them like this. They make them with a 36 to 40 inch hose, which of course, when you've got this length hose, you're really able to get this out there. Now these come off of the right side, so I'm going to put it like it was on the first stage and it's connected. And I would reach down and grab it and I would put it forward to the person that needs the air. So I would put it out to you like this. And I would put it over my arm, and I, the way I teach it to the instructors, dive masters, and students I work with, I teach it that the hose goes over the arm, extend that right shoulder a little bit, which gives full extension, and again, hold the second stage uh, hose don't hold the second stage itself. The reason why is that if I'm holding the second stage itself and somebody starved for air, they probably, and I think you'll agree with me, they probably want the purge button. And if my hand's blocking the way, then you hear this adage about, oh, they'll go for the one in your mouth. Now there's a couple of things that apply to that. And what I'm talking about is if you're not fully extending that arm towards somebody that's coming towards you, if you're holding it like this with your arm bent, well, your primary regulator's right next to your uh, octo that you're holding out there. People don't build that muscle memory about it fully extending that arm out and of course holding it by the hose. Now many instructors teach that when somebody takes the primary hose to build muscle memory out of their mouth, they teach them to grab the hose and turn it. And of course this is the primary source and direction that buddy breathing comes from. Now air sharing with an octo is not buddy breathing. Buddy breathing is what we used to do when we actually didn't have octos where we would share our primary air source back and forth with another diver. That's buddy breathing. There's another type of octo and it's kind of interesting and I'll show it and I'll do a close up here so you can see this. This one is actually made by Aqualung and there's some other, there's one called the Mari's uh, MV. And this particular unit, the mouthpiece, 
actually comes off the side. And what this does is when it's connected, and as a matter of fact, I actually use this type of, of Octo myself, and when it's connected here or here, however you happen to connect it, when you reach down and put your hand on this, it's a little bit like putting your hand on a pistol grip. And when you tuck that elbow in, tuck the elbow in and extend it, it's in the perfect position. And of course your hand's out of the way of the purge button. You extend it right out to the person coming to you. It's in the perfect position. There's really no up or down. And of course on the normal second stage, you know you need to have that mouthpiece up in those vents pointing down. Otherwise, somebody's liable to get a big slurp of water because again, underwater, air goes up, water goes down. So hold those second stages in the proper manner. And this just naturally goes into that proper position when you extend it. So I'm just a huge fan of these Aqualung. It's called the ABS Octo. They're available on the website, and uh, they're no more expensive than a good normal Octo. I'm going to talk briefly about Octo Inflates. And Octo Flates or Octo Inflates or Air 2, depending on your vernacular, look something like this. This is kind of a generic one that I went out and pulled. And basically, it connects to your bladder and comes over like a normal inflator, hangs right here, and it's got two buttons on it right here, plus it's got a purge on the end, and it is one that you could turn if you gave away your primary, which is what a lot of people do, is when they employ this type of system, they tend to do away with their yellow hose octo. Just remember, if you do that, 80%, 85% of the people in the world, if they're out of air and they're coming to you, they're looking for that yellow hose. And the person coming to you looking for uh, an alternate air system is not necessarily coming to you from the front. They may be coming to you from the back. So if you've got a yellow hose hanging out there on the side, then they're likely to grab that. Now, if you're facing the person, what's expected to do is you're expected to take your primary out of your mouth and pass it off to them. And then you're to turn your octo inflate, turn it and get it into your mouth and start breathing off of it. Now, this is a standard first and second stage. I took it right off the showroom out there. This is a normal first and second stage. So this, if it was mounted here and this came around, most of these hoses are 28 inch hoses, maybe 30. Most all of these second stages are not mounted on any kind of a swivel. It'll turn, but it's not a true swivel. And most of these, unless you get a braided hose, are on these stiffer, rubber low pressure hoses. So just remember if you're going to be utilizing an octo inflate and your primary's got a 28 inch hose on it, 30, whichever. Now my suggestion, remember all these octos come with 36 or 40s. So at least spend, you're spending extra money for the octo inflate. So spend a few extra bucks and go ahead and get a slightly longer primary hose so that when you do give your primary away to the other diver, you're able to keep them a little further away from you than just this. So just be aware that when you go to an octo inflate, please lengthen your primary regulator hose. Now let's talk briefly about octo holders. I've got one around my neck. It's uh, a lot of times known as a necklace. And what many divers will do is they will take their alternate air system and they will put it on the necklace so that they know exactly where it is. 
Now, if you've got it attached to your BCD in one of the normal locations would be like a D-ring down here on your, on your BCD. Some people hook them up here on one of the D-rings up here. Now, again, if it's properly attached, and mark my word, you're going to be out there diving and you're going to see people swimming along and their octos flapping around behind them because they forgot an octo holder or they don't pay any attention. But octo holders come in many flavors. The necklace, this one we see out there uh, that's kind of new, it's a magnet. This attaches, this goes on the hose, and you can actually hear how strong that is. Now a lot of people say, I don't want to use that because it's going to mess up my, my uh, compass. Well guys, your compass is located over here. And just remember, you don't normally use a compass in this position close to it. When you're swimming, you're in this position. And I've tried this many times. If you hold it here, yes, it will affect your compass. But if you're in a normal swimming position, where you're holding that compass out in line with your body, then it's far enough away that it doesn't necessarily affect the compass. But if you're, you know, got trepidation about that or concerned, don't, don't use this. But as dive masters and instruction instructors, we're constantly, you know, disconnecting, connecting. So one of the other ones that's pretty you know, uh, popular out there and cheap is the rubber band. Or some people use snorkel keepers. This is just one of the rubber bands. This stretches over and goes over, I'll show you. This goes over and stretches over the uh, mouthpiece like this, and this will connect to the BCD. Now just remember, if you're trying to get this loose, I'm going to show you sideways. If you grab this and you try to pull it straight forward, it's not going to come off of there. You need to grab it and pull the octo directly away from the holder so it comes off easily. There's also one like this. It's got a little uh, clip on it and little spots here, two here and one here. And these are fairly popular, a lot of they're cheap and they come on a lot of the BCDs and such. And the only issue that we happen to see with these, especially if you put them on these braided hoses, is that they slide. So you may have your octo in there and it doesn't take long all of a sudden that octo's dangling like this out behind you because it slides in there. Now these don't slide quite as much if you put them on the real rubber hose, because rubber hose, the true rubber hose is so much more, you know, thicker. And these tend to stay a little bit better. And when you pull them loose, they'll come loose okay. So there's a couple of different types of octo holders. The necklace, the uh, magnet, the, uh, I call it the bungee or the rubber band, and the clip style. Hopefully this was enlightening for you. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, maybe you use one of these different types, you'd like to leave some comments down below. Love to read them. I appreciate you watching, folks. I'm Bob Collins. As we say here at the Diver Supply Channel, dive safe. Thanks for watching.